Mitch McConnell was recently confronted in a restaurant with his wife by some angry protesters. So this happened at a popular Cuban restaurant in uh, Louisville, Kentucky. Take a look. Oh, yeah. Why did you get out of here? Why did you leave the entire I'm going to sell it to TMZ. He threw their leftovers at them? I didn't know that. They also, I don't think you saw it there, but they, somebody also went on to throw out his food, and there were multiple people who came up and basically yelled at him. Um, and I'm curious what you guys think about this, because I have to say, I'm... I have uh, very mixed feelings, and I feel like on all these similar stories, I have very mixed feelings. So recently happened with Ted Cruz, where Ted Cruz was in a restaurant with his wife, and um, you know you had the protesters basically shout him down and shout him out of the restaurant. Now, on the one hand, I think it's definitely fair to say that the people who are doing the shouting, I mean, that is literally free speech. Like, you're allowed to go up to somebody and scream at them. Obviously, you shouldn't do any physical assault. That's illegal. That should be illegal. I think we all agree to that. But... Uh, I don't know because I feel like what if in these situations mm -hmm. it actually works in the sense that it makes their voting records 5% less terrible. And that can make a real difference in people's lives. Now, on the flip side, let's not pretend that this doesn't make people look kind of unhinged, especially if somebody's watching this and they don't happen to know how terrible of a person and a politician Mitch McConnell is. I feel like a casual viewer could look at this and be like, well, obviously, the left is so unhinged and dumb and wrong, and uh, this is not how we should be, um, you know, fighting back. So I don't know. I'm curious what you guys think. I've always had mixed feelings on this kind of stuff. Yeah, let me just preface this by saying that I will always disagree with anything that gets physical, including throwing his leftovers um, out on the sidewalk. That's unacceptable. Don't touch him. Don't touch his food. Don't touch his property. That's when you lose me 100%. Now, with that said, I've asked myself several times how I would feel if people were shouting at me based on my political opinions. And if I would feel comfortable advocating for someone, you know, yelling at Mitch McConnell or Trump or any of the other goons, like, would I feel comfortable with them doing that to these elected officials if I'm not comfortable with someone shouting at me based on my political views? But we were just at Politicon. I had plenty of people shouting at me based on my political <laughs> all views. All of us, a little bit In, of that. All of us, exactly. <laughs> And here's the thing, it is free speech, and they're allowed to do that. And I believe that as Americans, we should be allowed to voice our concerns toward these elected officials. And so I have no problem with someone raising their voice at a Mitch McConnell or any politician if they believe that this politician has done something divisive, has done something that has actually ruined the lives of, of certain Americans, whatever it is. You should, you have a protection, a, a constitutional protection to be able to do that. And if you can't handle it, maybe it's time to rethink your political ideology. Do you think it's effective though? Because that's mm -hmm. one of the core things that I'm stuck on is I yeah. don't know if it's effective or if maybe it might even make it worse. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I've, uh, you're going to be shocked to find out strong opinions about this. <laughs> uh, but but it's nuanced and it, there's different lines in different places. So uh, first of all, um, I agree and I'm amused uh, that the right wing uh, who are claim to be free speech absolutists will then turn around and say, a mob, it's a mob, <laughs> I can't believe they're speaking freely. <laughs> Let's note that irony and move forward. Uh, so in terms of what uh, the ground rules should be, if we're making ground rules, um, one is um, I'm with Anna on yelling is okay from time to time. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna explain what I think are the important caveats. But uh, that happens to me all the time, not just at Politicon, but I'll be walking down the street in New York or I'll be at an airport and some guy will yell at the top of his lungs, all right? and if you want to like scream obscenities in the middle of an airport, that that's on you, brother. Okay, and it doesn't bother me at all. I'm actually slightly amused by it. Um, so I think that's okay. I think for a politician, it's even more okay. But uh, so where are the lines? First of all, I think everyone should agree to Anna's lines. Nothing physical ever. So to me, two places where this guy is clearly out of bounds. Uh, and this is the second guy, there was actually a, an earlier uh, protester as well. I'll tell you about him in a sec, uh, or her. 
Uh, this guy went out of bounds by banging his fist on their table. And I think that crosses the line. Agreed. Uh, and later they had uh, to go food, leftovers that they were gonna take home. And he grabbed it and threw it on the sidewalk. No, no, don't touch their stuff, okay? Uh, and and value leftovers, okay, I know I do. <laughs> okay, so, uh, and then the third part of it, I think, or second, depending on how we're counting, is there has to be some time limit to it, okay? If you're stalking someone and you keep following them, it then it gets concerning, right? So, and, and for me, and then some people will disagree with this, don't go to their house. Uh, I think that that's really dangerous, I think it's a bad idea. There's plenty of unhinged people, mainly on the right, but there could be some on the left. And I don't want anybody at anybody's houses, okay? That's that's crazy, if you ask me, I think that's crazy talk, okay? So in terms of the, the time period, look, um, I remember Alex Jones uh, at an airport stalked Bernie Sanders for about 20 minutes. Okay, you made your point, Alex, but as usual, you're unhinged. And then we start to worry about his security because you won't leave him alone. Somebody who stalked me at Politicon, and it was a bounds of reason, waiting for hours and hours. What are you gonna do? Why, you know? So Jeez. if you're following Mitch McConnell or Elizabeth Warren, I mean, you always gotta think shoe on the other foot, right? If you said something to Elizabeth Warren at an airport, I got no problems with that. You follow her around for 15 minutes, that's an issue, okay? It, that, that's my take on it, and I know that this sometimes it could be a little bit of a vague line, uh, but we got to keep things uh, under control and cannot let them be physical. On the other hand, real quick, and I've said this before, the reason we're having this situation is because of money in politics. And you might think, like, what, what are you talking about? Mitch McConnell will not talk to, he's in his home state of Kentucky, he mm. will not talk to any constituent from Kentucky unless they have a big fat check for him. And so when you create a situation where you cannot reach your own representatives unless you're willing to bribe them, well at some point the dam's gonna burst. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna be having some nice Cuban food and a woman and a guy and two separate occasions are gonna come up and yell at you because you've left them no recourse. And that is particular to politicians. Yeah, here's why I think this is a really tough issue. I just wanna give people who might not know some more information on Mitch McConnell so they understand. Cuz that anger, <coughs> even though it might look at face value, Irrational almost, it's actually, I think, perfectly rational. Because Mitch McConnell is a guy who, for example, he was for a constitutional ban on gay marriage. He supported every outsourcing deal, including NAFTA and GATT. He voted no on uh, bringing ch cheaper drugs into this country. Uh, he supported repealing Obamacare, cutting Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid. Uh, he voted yes on warrantless NSA spying with the Patriot Act. He supports uh, Guantanamo Bay and torture. He voted to uh, eliminate no, the estate tax. Day. Come on, like, well, hold on, no, one, no, more. You've lost me, one more, one more. <laughs> supported, <laughs> so he supported the Iraq war and the Afghanistan war. And But here's my ultimate conclusion and why this will always be a tough issue for me is that to look at the two most extreme examples that I could come up with. So if, if I see somebody yelling at Dick Cheney in an airport, screaming about the Iraq war and the fact he has blood on his hands and he ordered torture and all that stuff, yes, part of me is gonna go, go get him, absolutely. Mm -hmm. He's such a terrible guy. But then again, we have to argue based on principles as well. And if I saw somebody who was yelling at Bernie Sanders <laughs> in an airport, I'd be like, Oh, why are you doing that? Right. So I just, I, you know, I'm just, I think I'm always gonna waffle on this issue. I think it's a tough issue. Yeah, well, I, I think everybody agrees that it's a tough issue. Well, of course, some see the world as completely black and white on, right. on both sides. But uh, so I wanna tell you about the earlier woman. Uh, and so the one person recorded the, the second guy that you all just saw there. And, and they were clearly the most honest person in the room because they said, I'm gonna sell this to TMZ. And then <laughs> you saw the giant TMZ sign on the video. So apparently delivered on that promise. Okay, but Todd Bird and Casey Leak, their uh, partners, and, and they were at the diner as well. It's just great to see a married couple in Kentucky <laughs> that, that, it's, that are two guys. Uh, and, uh, and they're like, oh, that's Mitch McConnell. And then, but they were a little, I, I got the sense from that, I don't wanna put too many words in their mouth, that a little disconcerted at the, at the volume, right? And to, which goes to Kyle's point, if you're losing the gay couple next door uh, with your screaming, uh, then you gotta calibrate to see if that's the right way to approach the issue. Although your anger is incredibly justifiable yeah. based on the list that, that uh, Kyle read, and that list could go on and on. Oh, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> the first uh, woman was also uh, screaming apparently at the top of her lungs. And I like what she said though, she said, you're a traitor to this country, she mm -hmm. said to Mitch McConnell. And over and over told him how he was ruining the country. 
and then after she left, she went up to the window and gave him a double middle finger. <laughs> <laughs> now, and then the next guy, I, again, went a little uh, out of bounds, to say the least, on the banging of the fist on the table, etc. And, and in that video, it looks like the crowd is mainly telling him not to do it. Uh, according to witnesses, it was mixed. Mm -hmm. Some were saying, hey, hey, cut that out. And some were saying, we're applauding when both of them yelled at Mitch McConnell. So another interesting note in that is that they're bringing a loose Kentucky. That is an interesting point. One other thing that I just wanna bring up and quickly mention, I hate when people start to nitpick political activism and more importantly, protest, right? Because the whole point of protest is not meant to be based on the framing or the terms of the person who's being protested. Protests are not meant to be convenient. By definition, protests are supposed to make these politicians or elected officials feel uncomfortable. And so once you, and again, look, I think that there are some ground rules that do make sense. You don't wanna get physical, you don't wanna do anything that could be considered assault. I agree with you on the stalking thing, although I think 15 minutes isn't really that long. Um, but I don't wanna start nitpicking people who have been so frustrated at a political system that hasn't worked for them and elected officials who haven't looked out for them. I don't wanna nitpick them and tell them they're wrong when they finally get an opportunity to voice their concerns. Yeah, look, the First Amendment is meant to protect offensive speech. Yeah, you don't have right. to bother protecting perfectly pleasant speech. Exactly. No one's against that. And it's actually a point that the right wing makes often when they wanna say yeah. things that are racist, bigoted, etc. <laughs> and they say, well, hey, that's what the First Amendment protects. Yeah. Okay, that's fair, but the First Amendment clearly protects this as well. I mean, it protects it in two parts, not just in freedom of speech, but also being able to seek a redress of your grievances from the government. That's the Senate Majority Leader. It doesn't get any more government than Mitch McConnell. Yeah. And by the way, his dining partner, his wife, is Elaine Chao. The transportation secretary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you could not find a more government table in the whole country than that table if you wanted to get a, you know, to, to cite your grievances. And that is what they did. And in a sense, that's the most constitutional thing you could possibly do. Yeah, democracy is messy, and that's democracy. We just saw democracy. Yeah. yeah. So, and, and last, super last thing on this look, whatever you think of the bounds and the rules that we just stated, and whether you agree or disagree with them. Uh, one thing I think we sh can agree to is that the right wing talking point that when they say racist stuff, it's awesome free speech. But when the left wing says something, it's a mob, mm -hmm. is absolutely preposterous.